Well, good evening, Revive family and friends. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We are so glad that we can be together to break open the very bread of life with each other on this Wednesday evening. So thank you for joining us for our midweek teaching. Uh, we've been in a series called Kingdom Prayers for several weeks now. The last couple of weeks we've been talking about the kingdom authority that we have. And I pray that your life and your family has been blessed by these teachings. You know, God is really wanting to take us deeper. He has so much uh, more for us, so much more in store for us. Uh, even in the midst of the things that are happening in our world today, in our communities, uh, in the society today, God's word never fails. It is true and it's for us. And I just want to thank you for allowing me into your home tonight. Hey, before we get into the word, could you take a moment? We do this every week and just hit share. Uh, go ahead and share this video. You never know who might come across this teaching and be blessed by it. And that's the ultimate goal is that we want to be a blessing uh, to those that log on and listen in. So thank you again for being with us. Uh, if you got your Bible, I want you to go ahead. We're going to jump right into the teaching tonight. I want to go to the book of James chapter 3. Uh, we're going to open with James chapter 3 tonight. And I want to kind of continue along the lines that we've been in of authority. And we're going to continue to talk a little bit about authority, but I want to talk about the authority that's in our words. Uh, words have tremendous power, and the Scripture teaches us about the words that come out of our mouth. And I felt uh, just led by the Lord that tonight I want to talk a little bit about that. And I'm thinking next week as I was praying into this that we're going to talk a little bit about prophecy and what prophecy really means and individual prophesying in our life, uh, because what we're facing and what's going on in our world today, uh, it's important that the church rises up. It's important that the church begins to speak words of life and not death. It's so easy in our uh, society and in the community today to uh, just be bombarded with the negativity of the circumstances, the trials, the tribulations that we walk through sometimes in life. It's so easy to not speak the word of life, but to speak what our circumstances are speaking to us. And I feel an urgency in my heart. I feel an urgency in my spirit that it's time that we uh, begin to stir up on the inside of us once again the, uh, the scripture that teaches us about the power that's in our tongue. We all have power in our tongue, and the Bible teaches us that. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight and how it relates to our prayer life uh, and the importance of us being able to speak the proper words out of our mouth. So James chapter 3 is where we're going to go. Would you pray with me as we get ready to get into the word? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to join together online. We thank you for just your love and your spirit in our life. Lord, we just humble ourselves as your people tonight. And we say, Lord, we can't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from your mouth. So Holy Spirit, we invite you right now into this teaching. We invite you into this room. We invite you into our homes or wherever we are tonight. We just pray that you would just breathe life into every situation. God, that you would just bring encouragement and strength to every heart and every individual that's listening in this moment who will go back and listen, listen to this teaching. Father, we just pray right now that you would just begin by your spirit and your presence to minister to every need, to minister to every pain, every uncertainty, everything that may be going on in the lives of the listeners tonight. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come in like a mighty Russian wind and you would bring healing, you would bring hope, you would bring peace. Lord, that you would cause fear to leave and faith to begin to rise in the homes and the families of every person under the sound of my voice. And I ask, Father, tonight that you would hide me behind the cross and allow me to speak as the very oracles of God. In Jesus' name, and if you agree with that, say amen, amen. James chapter 3 uh, is a very familiar passage of Scripture. We're going to open with the Scripture, and we're going to be talking about the authority of our words. As I've already kind of stated, the authority of our words. And listen to what the writer of James teaches us here. Uh, James chapter 3, verse 1, it says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that you shall receive a stricter judgment. Verse 2, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Let me just stop right here and say that in verse 2, 
We all fall short. We all stumble, the Bible says. And it says, if anyone does not stumble in word, he is beginning to put an emphasis on the words that come out of our mouth. The words that come out of our, our mouth are very, very important. The things that are influencing the words that come out of our mouth, our thoughts that influence the words, the feelings that influence the words come out of our mouth. And it's very important that we guard what is coming out of our mouth. And there is a reason for that because he says, if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man. That word perfect means mature, that he is maturing and not we don't always get it right and we're not always perfect in what comes out of our mouth, but there is a maturity that God wants us to walk in that we do not allow things to come out of our mouth that do not line up with God's promise and God's provision for our life. Now let me just say this, that is so much easier said than done, but the Bible says that when we're able to control the words that come out of our mouth, in verse 2, it says that we're also able to bridle the whole body. What does that mean? Let me put it this way, that when we're able to begin to put a guard on the words that come out of our mouth, in, even in the place of prayer, and we begin to speak what God says, it begins to set the course for our life. There are a lot of people that are in really bad shape today, and one of the key things that we need to do to begin to change the course of our life, if our life is not where we want it to be, is to begin to change the words that are coming out of our mouth. Even in the place of prayer, it is so important that we change the words that are coming out of our mouth, that our words line up with the word of truth. And he goes on to say in verse number three, indeed, if we put bits in horses' mouths that they, may be, that they may obey us and we turn their whole body. He's talking about a, a comparison here, how something so small can begin to guide and begin to shift directions of things that are so big. It's very key that we get that. Verse four, he said, look also at ships, All they, although they are so large they are driven by fierce winds, but they are turned by, by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, it's a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Verse 7, for every kind of beast and bird or reptile or creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no one can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Listen, he says, nobody can tame this tongue. The only way to tame the tongue is to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit in our life. The only way to put a guard upon our lips and a guard upon our mouth and for our tongue to be in line with the word and the will of God is for us to be influenced, not by the things of the world, but to be influenced by the Holy Spirit. How many's ever been in that place where you like had to bite your tongue? It's a good thing that you bit your tongue <laughs> because your tongue can set things on fire just like that. I mean, I've, uh, we've all seen it in our life. Uh, we see it so crazily now in social media that you type out words on your social media post and those words, when people read them, can set things on fire and cause divisions and cause hatred and cause people to begin to be divided in ways that we've probably never seen or experienced. Why? Because words have power. And he says, who can tame this tongue because it is an unruly evil, it's full of deadly poison, with it. Come on, listen to this. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men. Let that sink in for just a moment. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth produce blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear all olives, or a grapevine bear figs? 
Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh water. The writer is telling us here that with the tongue, one minute we can be praising God, and the next minute we can be cursing people and spewing evil and gossiping about everybody. That with the tongue, one minute we can be speaking life, and the next minute we can be speaking death. And he, he's, he's, he's telling us here that the tongue is so powerful, the words that we speak, it's even like a rudder on a ship that the pilot of the ship or the captain of the ship can turn the rudder and the ship is going to go whichever way it turns. Can I say something to us tonight? In the place of prayer, in the place of what we are speaking, it is important that we are speaking the right things because many times our life, our family, our communities, our jobs, our health, our marriages go in the direction of the words that we are speaking. I'm here to declare unto us tonight that God is wanting us to begin to examine the words that are coming up out of our mouth. And we need to begin to uh, make corrections in our life. And we need to begin to allow the Holy Spirit to tame our tongue that we are not speaking our mind all the time. Come on, I'm not talking about silencing our voice to truth. But I'm here to tell you that everybody has an opinion. And if our opinion does not line up with the Word of God and the things that we speak, they can actually do more harm than they can good. And what we need in our world today is the church rising up in the place of prayer and speaking and declaring the word of God. That we are not speaking and declaring God's word one minute and then we're tearing down another denomination the next minute. It's so important that we get that and we understand that. Why? Because the tongue, listen, the tongue is a small thing that sets the course of our life. I've heard it said like this before, that there is a miracle, and the miracle is in your mouth. That if you will begin to speak the Word of God, it will begin to create miracles in your life. Where there is lack, you begin to speak the provision and, the, and, and, and what God says. You begin to speak those things that be not as though they were, and God will watch over His Word to perform it. It's so important in our personal life. It's so important in our corporate life. Is so important in our families. And the tongue, listen, the tongue has got me in trouble more than my actions. How many can uh, testify to that tonight? That words have gotten me in trouble more than my actions. It is the words that you say that can cause, uh, that, can, that can light a fire in, in, in your spouse's life. It can be one word in one moment. You guys are happy and everything is going good. But because of one word, the whole atmosphere of your living room changes. And now you are in a knockdown drag out because there is power in your words. And my words have got me in trouble more than any actions that I've ever done. That shows us the power of words. Listen to this in Proverbs 18 and 21. The Bible says this, that actually death and life are in the power of your tongue. We, there's even songs written about it. Speak life, speak life, speak life. That's easier said than done when you're in a time of uncertainty. It's easier said than done when you've got physical issues going on in your body. Listen, I realize that it's easier said than done when you have maybe financial issues that you're dealing with. But many times the feelings and the circumstances and the things that are going on in our marriages, maybe in your physical body tonight, maybe in your mental state, maybe in your finances as we've already stated, sometimes it's hard to speak life. Sometimes we get weary in the battle. We get weary in the struggle. We want to give in. We want to give up. And I just want to tell somebody tonight, don't quit. Don't give in. Don't give up. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil. God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But you've got to line your words up with the word of God. You cannot allow anything, anyone, any circumstance, any feeling, 
feeling, any turmoil that you may be facing, you cannot allow it to cause your mouth to begin to speak doubt and begin to speak unbelief and begin to speak death because Proverbs says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it shall eat its fruits. What does that mean? That your words produce fruits. And if you don't like the fruit that is in your life, and if I don't like the fruit that is in my life, I've got to begin to shift the words that are coming out of my mouth. And I've got to begin to line my words and my speaking up with what God has said about my circumstance and my situation. Listen, I'm putting this on the personal level because it begins at the personal level. Then it goes to the corporate level of us speaking life over our community, over our hospitals, over our schools, over our, over our, our, our police officers, over our fire departments, over those that are out here on the front lines every day. That, 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 that it begins in our personal life, but we begin to come together corporately to begin to declare our life over our community and over our nation. When we're talking about this authority of words and the power that's in our tongue and and, and, and being in that place of prayer, this is so important that we speak life and that we don't speak death. I remember when I first began to learn about the power of death and life or in the tongue. I was a young, very young Christian. I was in ministry school and I remember getting this revelation. I'd never been taught about the power of your words. Never have I ever been taught about that. And I was getting these teachings in ministry school, and they were teaching me about the power of death and life. They were teaching me uh, Proverbs, uh, James chapter 3 that I'm actually talking about tonight. And I'll never forget that uh, I came home one Monday from ministry training school. We, we went six days a week, and Monday was our day off. And I, I, I never forget, I was coming home, and I came home, and I was visiting with this lady that I used to go to church with, and she was telling me, uh, she actually got a phone call when we were talking, and when she answered the phone, uh, she got some bad news that uh, her child's dog had gotten ran over. And I know this is a sad story, but I, I, I just want to share this with you, because this little dog had gotten ran over. It got out in the road and gotten ran over. And when she got off the phone, I was like, oh, my gosh, what happened? And she said, I kept saying that dog's going to die. I kept saying that dog's going to get run over. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is real. <laughs> She'd been speaking that, and this dog got ran over. It was like a light bulb that went off. And I didn't, I didn't say, hey, the reason your dog got ran over is because you've been speaking that. I mean, I know the dog got out in the road, and that's the reason it had a, a, you know, somebody accidentally ran over it, but I was like, oh my gosh, this is really true that what you speak will come to pass. What you say can come to pass. Death and life are really in the power of the tongue. And I began to go, oh my gosh, what have I been saying? And I remember, I remember getting in the presence of the Lord and going back and saying, Lord, I rebuke that word that I spoke and I rebuke this thing that I said. And I just had this time because it became so real to me. It was a revelation that death and life are really in the power of the tongue. And I began to think about how words have so much power in the revelation of that, that they really, really have power. Because even as a little kid, we used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words shall never hurt me. And we would always do that when somebody would say something bad about us and call us a name. And we would go, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But that is so Far from the truth, because words have so much power, and even in the place of prayer, there is a prayer of authority that we've been talking about, and in that prayer of authority, we speak and declare life. There comes a point in our life that we're not just asking God to do something. There comes a point in our life when we have to grab hold of the truth of God's word. And we have to go to the place of prayer. And in that place of prayer, we're not asking God to do something again that he's already done. But we're standing in humility before him. And we're standing on the authority of God's word. And we are declaring that fear cannot have my mind. We are declaring that fear cannot have my children. Why? Because God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. 
We have to get to the point in our life where we are standing in that place realizing that words have the power of life or death. That we understand and it became a revelation to me many years ago. As I was just stating, it it became a revelation to me that our words are not just for communication. My words are not just so I can tell you how I feel and what's on my mind and what's my political stance and what I think this person should do or the president should do or the government should do. And listen, I I know we've got to stand up for truth. That's not what I'm saying. But, But a lot of times our words, this revelation came to me many years ago that our words are not just for communication. Our words have the power to create. Come on, if you're taking notes, you need to write that down. Our words are not just to communicate. Our words have the power to create. What you speak to someone can create can create hope or it can create fear. That's why the news media is so dangerous. Listen, we can't stick our heads in the sand and bury our heads in the sand. We've got to, we, we, we've got to know what's going on in the world, but there's a lot of false stuff that is out there in the world that can even come through the news media. And when we hear those words, those words have the power to create fear or to create hope within our life. It is the power of words and words have the power to create. I've used this example so many times that when you have a container, when you have a glass, when you have a bottle, something that can contain a bowl, whatever, when you have some sort of container, Whatever you have in that container, that container carries a substance. It carries a liquid. If you put water in a bottle, it's a container that contains it. And whenever you open up the lid and pour it out, whatever is in there, you can pour on someone's head. You can pour it down the drain. You can pour it in the sink. You can pour it outside. You can pour it. And whenever you pour it, it, go, it, it, it covers something. And words are like containers. And listen, there are so many words that are in our minds. There's so many words that come to our mind when we hear negative things, when we look at the circumstances that we're facing. It's so easy to say, well, we're all going to die. It's easy to say, you know what, I'm probably going to get sick. It's easy to say, uh, it's easy to say all those things. And whenever you say those things, it begins, your words have power to create both positive and negative That's why James said, that's why Proverbs says death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's why James said that what what the words that come out of your mouth will steer your life. The words that you speak over your children. Listen, even over your children, the words that I speak over my children can create things in their life. It can create positive things or negative things. And we have to realize that our words will frame our life more than the circumstances, more than the economy, more than the things that we're facing as kingdom people. Our words will frame our life. See, when we speak life, here's what happens. We minimize our problems. How many know in the computer screen you got this minimize button? You can minimize it. And when you minimize it, it it, it kind of goes away, but it's still there. Listen, there are problems. There are problems in the earth. There are problems that we face in our life. But you know what? God is bigger than our problems. He is bigger than our fears. And when we speak life, it's not saying that, hey, we don't have a problem or we don't have an issue. But when we speak life, we minimize that problem and we begin to magnify God. And when we magnify God, we begin to realize that, you know what, God is bigger than this financial issue. God is bigger than sickness and disease. God is bigger than the family issue that I've got going on right now. And so instead of of me talking about how bad it is and how big the problem is, when we begin to speak life, we begin to create hope and we begin to uh, actually create faith in our life because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the more we speak life, the more we speak the word, the more we create faith to overcome the problem. Listen, we can't, we can't, 
there's been so much quarantining, and I understand that. I understand the precautions and the safety and, you know, using wisdom. Don't hear me wrong. I understand that completely. But we cannot, we cannot hide in a corner. We've got to begin to rise up as the people of God, and we've got to begin to declare life and speak life and live the life that God has called us to live. And when we speak life, we begin to minimize the problem and we magnify God in our life because here's the reality it's very very easy easy to speak what you see and what you feel and the sad reality tonight is most Christians do not see the promises of God more then they see the problems that we're facing. If you spend five minutes in this word and you spend hours on the news media listening to it, can I tell you something? The words that you are hearing are creating something in your life. But the more you hear the word of God and speak the word of God, the more it creates faith in your life to overcome. Jesus told us, that in the last days, there will be sorrows. There will be the, the beginning of sorrows. There's going to be wars, rumors of wars, natural disasters, sickness and disease, all these things. But he said, hey, don't be troubled. He said, I will, I will protect you. My people, I will protect you. And what we have to do is we have to hear what God is saying. And we've got to see what God is doing more than what we see happening all around us. That's why it is easier to speak what we see and feel because most of the time all we're seeing and feeling is the negativity, is the uncertainty, is the worry, is the fear. And we have to learn to speak truth even in the place of prayer, realizing that there is power and authority in the written and the spoken word. Of the living God. We must be praying and speaking the authority of God's word over our family. We must be praying and speaking the authority of God's word over our health, over our marriage, over our finances. We must understand that even when things seem impossible, we must understand when even, even when things in our society and the news media and the, the things that are going on around us are not giving us a whole lot of hope, that's when the church needs to rise up and be, begin to declare the word of the Lord over their family, over their home, over their finances. And listen, I'm here to tell you, it begins in your home, but it's time for us, church, to begin to rise up and declare the word of life over our community, over Habersham, over Stevens, over White, over Rabin, over Franklin, over Hall County, over Towns County, the surrounding counties. It is time that we begin to rise up and we begin to speak life over our state, over our nation, over our world. We need to declare the word of the living God and begin to speak life. It's easy to say, oh, this world's going to hell and everything's about to burn up. It's easy to say, oh, if they, if they, they need to start school. Oh, they don't need to start school. Oh, if you go to school, it's going to do this. And it's easy to say all the things that we feel. But as Christians, as, as, as kingdom people, it is time we rise up and begin to speak the truth over our city, over our nation, that even when everything looks crazy and everything looks uncertain somebody's got to rise up in the kingdom of God the church has to rise up in the place of prayer and begin to declare the word of the Lord over our nation there's a kingdom destiny on our nation and the enemy is trying to steal it there's a kingdom destiny on your life and on your family but the enemy is trying to steal it and destroy it and we've got to rise up. It's so important. So important in our life. What do you do when things seem bleak? You speak life. What do you do when you feel like there's no life? You speak life. 
What do you do when you feel like that you're not going to make it? You've got to keep speaking life. That is easier said than done. But don't stop speaking life. Because that's what the scripture tells us. I'm reminded we're going to talk about this a lot deeper next week. We're going to talk about the importance to prophesy over your life, over your family, and over our community, and even over our nation. Listen, hear the urgency. It is time we rise up as the church and begin to prophesy the word of the Lord. What does that mean? Speak the word of the Lord. Speak life. Well, things don't seem good, Pastor. That's why we need to be speaking it even more. I'm reminded of Ezekiel 37. It's a very, very familiar scripture. It's about the dry bones. and I want to take a moment and read this. Because the reality is, even in Ezekiel's time, things didn't look very good. There was a whole valley, and it was nothing but dry bones. But God had a word. But he needed somebody to speak the word. Can I declare unto you tonight, God has a word. But if that word is just laying on a shelf, if it is something that you are not speaking out of your life, if it's not something that's coming out of your mouth repeatedly, then that word is just laying there. And you've got to activate that word by speaking it. And in Ezekiel's situation, there was a valley of dry bones. There, there, in the natural, it was impossible for life to flow. It was a hard place. And some of you listening tonight, you may be in a hard place. You may be in a tough place. Can I say something to you? You are not by yourself. I am standing with you. There are others standing with you and believing with you. Someone may be listening tonight and you feel alone. You may feel like, oh my gosh, here I go again. I thought this was over. But you know what? In Jesus' name, you've got to allow the Spirit of God to be stirred on the inside of you. And you've got to keep speaking life. Even as Ezekiel was in this tough place, this valley of dry bones, the the word of the Lord came forth. In Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 it says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them and all around behold there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones lived, live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Hey, Ezekiel was a very smart man. I would have probably said, ain't no way these bones can live. (laughs) These bones are dry. These bones have no life in them. There's no way. But Ezekiel said, oh, Lord, only you know. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered and said, oh, Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, these bones, thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So what did he do? Verse 7, so I prophesied. As I was commanded, and I prophesied, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, and the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Man, I want to preach what I got. For next week, but I can't do that yet. Also, he said to them, he he said to me, prophesy the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on the slain that they may live. So I prophesied, prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. 
as he prophesied, as he spoke the word of the Lord. Listen, here's what I want to say in closing tonight. The power of the words that are coming out of your mouth. You may feel beat down. You may feel like, God, where, where are you? Listen, don't let anything rob you from speaking life. Don't let anything rob you from getting into what God's getting into God's word, finding out what he says and begin to speak it. I want to challenge somebody tonight that you may be going through something in your physical body. You get what God says, you rise up on your feet and you begin to speak it. You begin to speak life in the place of prayer. I want to challenge us corporately tonight as a church. Listen, come together with us at 9:30 on Sunday mornings corporately and let's begin to prophesy to our nation. Let's begin to speak life over our nation. Let's begin to come to this place of kingdom prayer, of prophesying and declaring the word of the Lord. Listen, if nobody will speak over the dry bones, they will not live. If nobody will speak the word of the Lord in the hard place, in the uncertain place, when it looks like that the enemy is trying to take our entire nation out in sickness and disease and economical disaster, and what are we going to do if somebody don't rise up called the bride of Christ and begin to prophesy to this hard place and this dry place. If we don't begin to rise up and do it, it's nobody's fault but our own. If we don't walk in life, if we don't walk in freedom, if we don't walk in the power that Jesus has already given us and delegated unto us, it is nobody's fault but our own. It's not your pastor's fault. It's not your mama's fault. It's not your daddy's fault. It's not your boss's fault. It is only our fault if we don't rise up and begin to declare life and frame our world and minimize our problems and begin to magnify our God because He is greater than anything this world has to offer, good or bad. Ezekiel rose up when there was a valley of dry bones. He began to speak the word of the Lord. He began to speak what God says. And we have to create life and we have to create encouragement because the words that we speak will frame our world. God is calling us in the midst of a painful time, in the midst of an uncertain time, both personally, both corporately, and even in our world, He's calling us to say, do not forget there is death and life in the power of your tongue. That out of your mouth should not be one minute blessing God and the next minute cursing someone else. That out of our mouth should remain and we should be constant and we should be consistent in declaring God, God's Word and speaking life over our life and our situation. You say, well, pastor, I've been doing that for a little bit. Nothing's happening and nothing's changing. Keep doing it. Ephesians 6 says, when you've done all to stand, you just keep standing. Keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Come on, would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight. Lord, cleanse our lips. Cleanse our lips and our tongue from speaking death. Forgive us, oh God, where we've, where we've lined our, our words up with, with death. Forgive us where we've lined our words up with the world instead of the kingdom mandate and the, the kingdom agenda that you've given us through your word. Forgive us, God, for, for, for allowing the words that we hear from the world to be greater than the words that we hear from your spirit, from we, than, than we hear from your written word. God, forgive us where we fed ourselves the things of the world more than we've fed ourselves the life-giving bread of life. God, forgive us tonight. Have mercy on us. We pray in the name of Jesus that we cannot live by bread alone. We cannot live by the news media. We cannot live by the uncertainty. We cannot live by what the government does or does not do. We cannot live from stimulus to stimulus. God, we cannot live by the dictates of this world. We need you, God. You are our source. You are our strength, Father. You said that no matter what happens around us, that you will always be there for us, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. 
So God, forgive us tonight. Awaken the church out of sleep and slumber. Awaken us out of spiritual lethargic living. Awaken us out of lukewarm Christianity, God, where we just run to you when we're in real big trouble. Awaken us, God, and stir personal revival in us. And help us, Lord, to speak and declare life in this hour God, this window of opportunity that you've given us in 2020 to see the kingdom of God move forward and fulfill your heart's desire for the people of this community, the people of this house. May we not miss the opportunity that you've given us, Lord. I want to pray specifically, Father, for those that are listening, that are in a battle and in a struggle. I prophesy to them tonight, and I speak life over every home. I speak life over every family. Every family of Revived Church, God, I declare that they are the head and not the tail. I declare sickness and disease will not overtake them in the name of Jesus. I declare breakthrough in lives and families tonight, God. I I declare breakthrough in, in, in the arena of mental thinking. I declare breakthrough because you are the God of breakthrough. And I pray, Father, for breakthrough in every struggling heart, in every struggling mind, God. I pray for physical breakthrough. God, I pray that people that are uh, dealing with physical issues in their body, I declare life and healing over them tonight. I declare that every marriage that's struggling, God, let your peace and your grace come in like a mighty Russian wind in the name of Jesus. And I speak peace and declare peace over every home, no matter what's happening around us, no matter what's happening in the news media. Father God, I thank you that your peace is greater. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would cause us to come to a place that we speak life and not death. That we are consistent in it. So bless every home tonight. Give every person, God, peace in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that, just say amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us 9.30 Sunday mornings for prayer right here in the sanctuary. Hey, if you need prayer for anything, we love you. We are standing with you. You can send a private prayer request. You can do that by going on our website. You can do it on Facebook. We love you. We'll see you soon. God bless you.